Hey everybody, Josh Massey here, joining you for another Crucible cast. Hopefully, as they say, 17th time's the charm on this video, so crossing my fingers. But we wanted to come to you guys today uh, just to give you a little bit more information about Keyforge, keep you guys in the loop and kind of where we stand. And as you can tell, today I am joined by absolutely no one, at least not here. We'll get to Aaron on the development side in just a little bit here. But just to give you guys a rundown of what we're planning on doing today, we are going to talk a little bit about some Keyforge news and talk a little bit about some OP. And then we've got a rules question for you. So we'll get to that with Aaron after I'm done with you guys up here. So thanks for joining. I know these are very weird times and I'm glad that, you know, we have your support and I want you all to know that we're doing our best to support you as well in these very, very strange times we're all living in. So with that, I have an announcement to make. So this is part of our news section. Um, we are going to be launching Mass Mutation worldwide at the end of July. Um, the only caveat to that is there is going to be a region. We're going to have China and Taiwan who are going to get it at the end of May. They will be getting it earlier than most. Some of you may have seen this news pop up on our website yesterday. But yeah, China and Taiwan are going to get everything at the scheduled release time where the rest of the world is going to get it just a little bit later. Uh, the reason that, that is is because as you all know or may know, uh, they're through most of the the scary part of COVID-19. So we're going to launch in that market so that they can start playing the game with the new stuff. It will only be in their local languages. So you, we will have to wait to get any other languages and any other product for the rest of the world for just a couple months. So now you know what we know. Um, uh, another thing for just our OP news is... Um, as you again may or may not be aware, all OP for store level play is still postponed until September. No change on that one. Um, and everything else is going to be the end of July for larger events. Uh, we will continue to monitor and we will continue to update that as needed. But just so you're all aware, that's where we stand right now. So moving on to some OP, um, we are still playing our games. I know it's a hard time to do that. We can't go to our stores, we can't play in any events, but we're still at home. I've actually had a couple Skype, well, I would say Skype, but we're not using Skype, we're using Discord. But I've had a couple games with people using my camera. It's actually been really, really fun to play with some people that I actually hadn't talked to in a while. So we're still playing Keyforge. We're still doing what we can to make sure that we're all still experiencing games that we know and love. And we're gonna ask you to do the same. So uh, we're working on some right now, I can't give you too many details, but keep your eyes open on the OP Twitter and the OP Facebook page for more announcements about how we're gonna try to keep you guys as involved with our process right now as we can. So keep your eyes open, watch out for that, and hopefully we'll have that for you pretty soon here. Um, otherwise, this isn't really OP, this is more marketing, but as you guys may have seen, we have some print and play decks out there. So I know this is kind of a hard time to maybe find some decks as your local game stores may not be up and running right now. And, you know, it's just harder to find Keyforge right now. So if you haven't, go find those print and play decks and play with your family, play with your friends, go and jump on a video chat and just hang out with somebody and play some Keyforge. So, uh, yeah, that's really all we have for OP. I know it's not a whole lot. I know it's not too exciting. And this is probably going to be a short cast today. But know that we are doing our best to make sure to create the best experiences for all of you as soon as we are able to get back up and running. And I will now cut the time over to Aaron, who will take you up for the rest of the cast. Bye. Thanks, Josh. Today we're looking at a card that we've got a lot of rules questions about. It's Livia the Elder from Worlds Collide, which reads, Reap, you may exalt Livia the Elder. If you do, each friendly creature's fight effects and reap effects are fight slash reap effects for the remainder of the turn. Uh, so this is such a cool ability. It opens up all this new possibility space for all your creatures. Um, but of course, when creatures start working in ways that they 
don't usually, that can lead to more sort of confusion. So this one naturally has a lot of rules questions associated with uh, Livia and her different interactions with different cards. So we're going to look at six of those cards today and how she interacts with each of them. The first one is Terror Dactyl, which has a before fight ability that reads deal four damage to each neighbor of the creature Terror Dactyl fights. So the question is, does Terror Dactyl's before fight ability become a before fight slash reap ability because of Livia, or does it not? And the answer is no, it does not. Uh, the before fight is a distinctly different timing point than fight, so uh, it doesn't translate, doesn't uh, count for Livia's effect. The second card we're going to look at is Thero Centurion, which has a play fight ability that captures one amber. And the question is, does its play fight ability become a play slash fight slash reap ability? Uh, and the answer is yes. Livia only checks whether or not you have a fight or a reap effect and then adds the other timing trigger. The existence of additional timing triggers like play or destroyed will not disqualify the ability from gaining the additional fight or reap timing trigger from Livia. The third card we're going to look at is Snag, which reads, uh, Fight, your opponent must choose the house of the creature Snag fights as their active house on their next turn. And the question with this is, uh, it's, a, it's a discard, but if you use like Legatus Raptor or something like that to use an offhouse card, so you had Livia's ability active with Snag, um, the question is, could you then reap with Snag? and force your opponent to choose a house, how would that work? Um, the answer is that Snag will, will still reap and gain you the one amber, but he will uh, not allow you to force your opponent to choose a particular house uh, because he didn't fight a creature. So do as much as you can in this case is gain one amber, but then nothing else happens. The next question we're going to look at is uh, Senator Bracus which reads, you may spend amber on friendly creatures as if it were in your pool, and then has a fight reap effect that just exalts Senator Bracus. And the question is, does his fight slash reap effect with uh, Livia become a fight slash reap slash fight slash reap effect? Uh, so essentially, do you trigger his exalt twice each time you fight or reap because of Livia? The answer is no. Livia's ability is only uh, adding uh, timing triggers to an existing ability, and having multiple instances of the same timing trigger would be redundant. So a fight or reap ability cannot trigger multiple times off of one fight or one reap. The next card we're going to look at is Song of the Wild, uh, which relates uh, to lots of cards, but Livia the Elder kind of, uh, because she gives more things reap ability, make this, makes this interaction happen more often. Um, so Song of the Wild reads, Play for the remainder of the turn. Each friendly creature gains reap, gain one amber. And the question is, if you have a creature that already has a reap effect, and you have Song of the Wild active, um, when you reap the creature, do you gain both uh, effects? And the answer is yes. Uh, this is uh, in the rulebook glossary entry for reap, which reads, when a player uses a creature to reap, the player exhausts the creature, gains one amber from their amber pool, for their amber pool, and then all the reap abilities on the creature is all. I kind of added emphasis on the all. So all reap abilities trigger uh, each time you reap with a creature. The last card we're going to look at is Compsos Harispex. And Compsos uh, Harispex ability reads, each friendly creature's play effect is a play slash reap effect. And the question is, how does this interact with Livia? Uh, do they both uh, stack on top of each other? So if you have, say, Odoak the Patrician, a creature that has a uh, play, gain one amber ability, uh, would... Compsos and Livia then work together to make it a play slash fight slash reap effect. And the answer is yes. Um, since Compsos Harispect and Livia's abilities are both constant effects, after Compsos' ability adds the reap timing trigger to Odoak's ability, uh, Livia's ability will instantly check and see that the ability now qualifies to also have the fight trigger added to it as well. So that works. <laughs> so I hope uh, this helped. Hope this cleared up a lot of the confusion around Livia the Elder. Uh, we appreciate all the questions, so keep sending those in, uh, and we'll keep getting to them as soon as we can. The email address should be appearing somewhere around here, magically. And uh, that's all we have for you this week. Remember to follow us, like us, and subscribe to us on all uh, our social media channels. The links are in the video description below. And thanks for watching. Bye.